god, I can't believe we're already at the end of February. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Ben Reads, and welcome to my February wrap-up. I feel like I made the January wrap-up like two weeks ago, so this is really weird to me. Like, I feel like no time has passed at all. So today we're going to be talking about the books I read in February, and I hope that's something that interests you. So first off, in the month of February, the first book I read was Fireborn by Rosaria Munda, I think? And five out of five. I loved everything about this book. So to start off, this is a book about a society that is listed in- that lives in a hierarchy, and the highest people used to- like, the highest people in the hierarchy used to be the Dragon Riders. But there was a revolution, and everything changed, and now anyone can become a dragon rider. So there's this group of kids that got selected to be in a tournament to see who would be, like, the head dragon riders of this troop. So the story follows, like, the tournaments and the inner drama following this group of young dragon riders who are trying to come into their power. Now, I really, really enjoyed this book. I gave it a really good review. Uh, I was gonna talk about it uh, in a video review, but I decided to wait until Flamefall comes out, which is later in 2021. I thought I read that it was March, but that might be different now. But I am gonna be doing a review for both books soon, as I will be doing a review for the entire series of Akatar. I think I'll be writing that review this week. But yeah, I loved Fireborn. I loved the drama, I loved the characters. Annie and Lee were super interesting. I got off to a rough start with it where I really thought I wasn't gonna like it, but I ended up loving it, so I'm really happy about that. The second book I read this month was The Marked Girl by Lindsay Klingele, I think it is, and I fucking hated this book. This book was absolute garbage in my opinion, as you saw in my rant review that I posted this month. This book was Wattpad fanfiction on drugs. It was awful, uh, the characters were terrible. The writing was terrible. I just, I couldn't get behind anything that was done in this book, and I hated it. And it got, if I could have given it a 0 out of 5, I would have, but Goodreads doesn't let me do that. And I do my reviewing mostly on Goodreads. So if you aren't following my Goodreads, there is a link in the description, so you should go do that. The third book I read this month was A Spark of Light by um, Jodie Picoult. Jodie Picoult, I think, is her name. And she was a popular author, so this is the first time I've ever read any of her books. Which is surprising because I have a lot of them in my house. I've just never got around to reading any of them. But I heard A Spark of Light was fairly controversial, and I was in for a controversial time. And it was. It was pretty good. It was very good for the beginning half, but then I found the pacing in the second and third half really faltered for me. So I only ended up giving it a 3 out of 5, I believe. The pacing just really didn't work for me. Uh, so A Spark of Light is a about a an abortion clinic that is being shot up by a guy whose daughter received an abortion. And basically the story progresses at the end of the night. It starts at the end of the night where they're all getting out of the building. Well, getting out of the building and then it progresses earlier throughout the day, so every chapter we go back an hour to see what happened. That really worked for me for the first about, like, five chapters, and then after that, we eventually got to a point where these people are just at their houses, and, like, that was interesting to see what their lives were like, but at the same time it wasn't really what I was interested in, so that's where it really faltered for me. The fourth book I read this month was A Court of Wings and Ruin, which I'm reading the Akatar series right now, so I was not surprised that I fucking loved this book. I am going to talk more about it in my review of the entire Akatar series, which should be coming out soon. I have some reevaluated opinions that I want to discuss about my preferences between the first two books, but yes, everything yes. Like Sarah J Maas, you know how to write characters, like my god. I loved this book, I loved the characters. I love the war conflict. I won't get into any details, obviously, because this is the third book in the series. So we're basically dealing with the aftermath of the second book, going into the finalizing aftermath and like war shit of, that the third book focuses on. And it was amazing. I cried. <laughs> I'm, I don't cry at many books. So when a book makes me cry, it's very important to me. And I've cried at two of her books. So. 
oh i was oh my god the fifth book is i think so uh book i read was actually a short book it was like 24 pages by tamsin Moore. it is the mysterious study of dr sex um, so this is a prequel to the Locked Tomb trilogy. It's a like short novella just about Palimides and Camilla. Or Camille. I think it's Camilla. And it's just a really cute short story about their life in the um sixth house. I'm blanking really hard right now. But it was just a short story about their life, and they have this little mystery kind of Cluedo-esque thing, and that's kind of the premise of the first book too, but it was just, it was really cute, and I love the way those two interact, so like I gave it a 4 out of 5. Basically, um, Polymides and uh, Camilla, I keep thinking I'm forgetting, I'm getting the names wrong, because there's so many names in the uh, other two books that I just get them confused all the time. But they find a study and they start looking through it and uncovering the mysteries within. So it was really cute and it was really interesting. Sixth book I read this month, I read The University and it was Orcs and Crake by Margaret... <sighs> I forget her name right now. By Margaret... It's on the tip of my tongue and I swear... <sighs> Margaret Atwood. It's by Margaret Atwood. And I love her books. So I was weirded out by this one and... I shouldn't have been surprised by the, like, the sex talk in this book, but there was a lot, um, and a lot of it weirded me out. I didn't really like the main character, and I didn't really like the female main character, well, main character. Um, there was a lot of talk about child pornography, which was really bothersome to me. I don't like discussing those things. I know it's important, but the way I almost felt like this book glorified it, and I think that was what the the point she was trying to make was that society can sometimes glorify these horrible things, but like to me it felt really weird. So I only ended up giving this book a 3 out of 5 because I just didn't enjoy a lot of those aspects. I didn't enjoy the sex aspect, I didn't enjoy the romances, it all felt just very weird to me. But I enjoyed it for the purpose that it had where it was discussing this like society shift and climate change and like how we can become apathetic to things and how there are science people and there are art people, and like that stuff is really interesting to me, but I am glad I'm finished it. I can't really summarize this book at all, it was way too weird for me to explain. The seventh book I read this month was a did- I didn't finish it. I really wanted this book to be good, but it wasn't. So I read Three Dark Crowns. I can't remember who the author was, and I thought I had it in the room, but I do not. But Three Dark Crowns was a book that I really expected to be good, and it wasn't. The three main- so basically in this book there are three main queens from three different elemental factions- not elemental factions, one of them is an elemental. I am terrible at summarizing books, by the way. But there are three main queens, all with different powers, and eventually they have to kill each other, and one que queen will reign supreme. My issue with this was they never explained how any of those really worked. Not as far as I read anyways, and the magic system was super confusing and really hard to get behind and believe, and it just felt like she wanted- the author wanted you to accept what she was saying rather than question it. And when I'm reading books with weird magic systems, I always question it, so I wanted her to explain to me why things are this way, and she never did. So we had the three queens who had to kill each other, and I honestly didn't care if any of them died. I thought I liked um, Arsenault for the first little bit, and then she became a whiny brat, and then I was just like, oh, alright, well, I'm done now. So it was just- it wasn't good. Like, it, I know some people like it, but to me it was just trashy YA, so yeah. And finally this month, a book I am still currently reading is A Court of Silver Flame by Sarah J Maas. I have no doubts in my mind that this will be a 5 out of 5 for me, unless something real serious happens in the next couple chapters, but I fucking love this book, and I knew I would because like I connected with Nesta on a lot of levels that weren't necessarily like to do with her brash attitude or anything, but like I could- the entire series I could see where they were going with her character, that she was like doing these things because like she was hurting inside and like- just that raw emotional pain was forcing her to push people away, and they really, really delve- like, Sarah J. Moms delves 
deep into the hells of Nessa's mind in this book, and I know people are just like, it's just smut. Like, the entire book is smut. I was surprised by the lack of smut for the first half of the book. But it's it's hitting now. Like, I'm getting it all. I'm thoroughly impressed by uh, Mazo's enhanced smut skills in this book. But anyways, other than the smut, the story and the way they're taking- they're trying to help Nesta and like bring her out of this really dark place that she's in, that really means a lot to me reading it. And there's this whole message throughout the book of like, keep reaching out your hand to people who are suffering and to people who are pushing you away because they feel like they can't rely on people without hurting them. And that was a message that I really needed to hear lately because I've been struggling a lot mentally and I just- I was relating to Nesta in everything she was saying about like feeling like there were wolves whispering in her ears, like horrible things in her ears, and she was blaming herself for so much and it was just- I know, I just went on a whole rant about Nesta, but that rant is for another time. I'm going to do an Akatar review, I swear, so that'll be coming soon. But. Again, I will be thoroughly impressed if this book lands anything less than a 5 out of 5 for me. So to finish off, I read 8 books this month, which is pretty good. I actually think that was more than last month. I think I read 6 books last month. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm definitely planning on keeping up on reading in March. I think the second book to uh, Fireborn comes out in March, which I am deeply looking forward to. I have a bunch of books on my TBR that I can't wait to read next month. I got a Kobo because I'm honestly running out of shelves to put all this shit on. So I'm just, I'm really looking forward to it and I think it's gonna be a great time. So thank you all for watching, I hope you liked my recap, and I'll see you next time. Bye!